Okay, here's a video about nose belt moulding. Um, take the nose of the original mould and divide it up into, I usually do every two inches, and then transfer that onto a piece of hardboard. Um, I tried it with um, paper or cardboard, but I find that I tend to cut into it, so hardboard's cheap, good thing to use. Plywood would work just as well, whichever. Mark off your two inch segments, the same as you did on the actual mould. And then we take a nice flexible ruler. Um, first station obviously is zero, and then two inches in, measure the the mould. Just hold it down tight to the surface and measure it off. I got this out of a Christmas cracker. Nicked it from my niece. <laughs> Hope her mum didn't find out. Okay, measure that and then transfer onto the hardboard at that two inch station. Pretty straightforward really. Obviously you got halfway, so you mark an equal Take your measurement, divide it by two, and then uh, mark mark each each piece out ninety degrees to the center line. This will give you a projected flat surface of the shape of the mold. Next two inches in, do the same again. So on and so on, till you get to the end. I like to use a, an indelible marker. It stays there. Um, it rubs off of the mould, no problem. So yeah, here's the last one. Just measure it and mark it onto the end. Then basically join up the dots. I tend to use a straight ruler, just join the dot to dot, and then sort of flesh out the curves a little bit afterwards. Just sort of uh, take take the corners off, really. There you go, that's the basic outline. Just need to uh, flesh out the curves a little bit so as they're not quite so straight. And there we have it. That should be pretty close to the projected surface of the mould. Now we also want an overlap. So for this, I add on about another 10 millimeters to one side. You could do this when you're marking out. Just add on 10 millimeters before you divide the overall measurement on the flexible ruler by two. But I like to do it this way. It doesn't really matter. The, the fiberglass that you actually cut is so flexible that it, it works either way. really accurate aren't they? It doesn't matter as long as it's close enough. There it is. Cut it out on the bandsaw. Or oh, you know, you could cut it out by hand, whatever, whatever, wherever you've got the hand. Any tools that you've got available really. Then just sand it nice and smooth. So you've got a nice even curve all the way around. And uh, I can't help it, being a carpenter, I've also got to take all the edges off, so it's, it's nice, comes to hand, and it doesn't snag on the cloth or anything like that. It always helps.
I'm sure you're getting the idea of what I'm going to do now. And um, this is this now is the pattern that I cut out my fiberglass for, for the mould, and it's already the right shape to fit. Saves time in the long run. It may take ten minutes or so to make up this template, but once you've got it, it you keep it for the life of the mould. A little bit of cleaning up. I may be slightly paranoid about a clean workbench. I can't help it. Sorry. Okay, we take our fiberglass, it's on a cutting mat, and we get hold of a rotary cutter. This is just a, a very sharp disc, really. Uh, brilliant. I think they uh, started off with um, fabric makers, tailors, dressmakers, that sort of thing. That's where I got this big one from. And I was really impressed with that. And then I got this little one. Wallpaper supplies. It's for cutting wallpaper, apparently. But it comes to hand so much easier being a smaller radius. You can go around tighter circles and things. And it's the one that I choose to use most of the time now. Very sharp, so watch your fingers. Won't work on Kevlar, but brilliant on carbon fibre and any thickness of glass, really. Just follow the car, follow the hardboard round. Cut out the shape. Remove the template. And lift out the piece of fibreglass. It's ready to go. Cut out as many as you need. And then you're all set up to go moulding, really. The only other thing you have to do is wax up the mould. Um, I usually put 10 coats of wax on there. And then coat a PVA. Put it on with a sponge. And we're ready to start building a mould. Or a, a, a piece to come out of a mould, rather. Okay, so we'll just test, test the first piece to make sure it all fits. Keep it nice and flush on the one side there. Um, this works easier when you're actually wetting it out, but yeah, it gives you the idea that it's it's going to be the right shape. Slightly bigger is better than slightly smaller, obviously. And there it is. You can see flush on one side and sticking up around ten millimeters on the other side. Anything six to ten mil is great. Okay, that's the preparation done.